Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alvin, I'm a part-time reseller here in Singapore and in today's video we're gonna, it's like the end of the month of January, my, now it's in February but I'm gonna talk to you about what sold my last week in January and also roughly talk to you about the whole month of January sales through. I would have thought it would be way lesser considering that it's after the festive period but yeah, it's, it's, it's quite bonkers that I can do that much. So stick around and do give this video a like if you find it useful. And do consider subscribing to my channel where I post videos on what so give you an insight in what you can sell as an eBay reseller uh, based in Singapore. And in today's video, for the whole of the week 4, um, from January 24th to January 30th. I mean, there is one more day in the, uh, as in 31st of January, but I don't count that because it's a seven-day week. Total sales was $2,275.53, which is pretty amazing, actually, uh, considering that last week was about that much. And my net sales was $1,843.07. That is... Uh, exclusive it doesn't count shipping it doesn't count sales tax selling cost is shipping on top of it so this is about 14.6 percent because almost all my listings have uh shipping rate on it and more i I've, I've tried to do away with free shipping of late and quantity sold was 18 i got 18 items uh, out the door the whole week then the average sales price is about $126.42. None of them were by auction, all through fixed price. So hence the $2,275.53. Total buyers were 17. So there was a buyer that bought two items which was combined shipped to him. Um, but out of the 18 items, uh, let me just run through it very quickly. Uh, first was this, again, World of Final Fantasy Maxima uh, item, this game that I bought a few to, to resell and I'm trying to bring it down, to sell down them because our good old distributor in Singapore has reissued it, I guess. So I'm just trying to clear them as they go because there's tons of it in Singapore. Um, the next item will be this Masters of Universe Classics Castle Grayscale stands. These are small little stands that you can put your figures on top of it. Uh, I took a, I think I took a best offer of it. The next one will be this Sentinel BF that I had for ages. This figure uh, went out. It, the shipping wasn't cheap, but it went out to US, so that's that's just one thing. Um, then of course there's this buyer that bought two of the Jason Voorhees figures, these 12 inch figures uh, that I combined ship to them and then the price as it is, I'm going to show everything here. Then the next thing I want to share with you is this 3A shirt, this life size shirt, as an actual shirt that I wore. Uh, I cleaned it, washed it and I put it on on eBay and it sold, surprisingly. <laughs> so that's, that's one thing good. Uh, moving on the same line as 3A will be this Quite big vinyl figure from Ashley Wood himself. His mighty square. I had it loose. I displayed it uh, in my cabinet, and then I decided to sell it. Took a while to sell. Uh, yeah, and then the the sales price was as it is. You can see it on the screen. Then another three A item. I had way too many three A items that I need to clear down, and because uh, Ashley Wood three A branding isn't used anymore, I guess so. But there are people still collectors who still collect 3A items because the artist Ashley Wood is something or someone that people look up to. So you might want to consider selling down and getting rid of your items if you wish to. Lah, because I got way too many of them. Then of course this is a shell casing that I bought. Uh, I think I sold it at like, uh, 30 US dollars if I'm not wrong. Uh, the shipping was not cheap on it. Uh, then the next item will be this Taiko no Tatsujin drum with the game itself. It comes with the game, comes with the drum, and it's sold. 
I bought it at cash converter for 80 US, uh, 80, Sing, 80 Singapore dollars and then it sold for, yeah, for, sold for 160 US dollars. Yeah, I kind of doubled my money on that. The next item is actually a lot of 10 figures that I sold to a China uh, person uh, who wanted the whole lot. He actually wanted one set, one series and then I couldn't sell it to him but then I sold him cheap. Uh, yeah, we went through volumetric weight, which I will touch upon later. Talk about volumetric weight and what's the difference between the two. In in short, then yeah, this went out to him at uh, two hundred with a fifty dollar US shipping cost to it. The next item will be this loose Marvel Legends figure. This Marvel Legends figure, his Luke Cage figure, I uh, took it separately from a box set and I sold each figure separately uh, to, to, to get back my cost uh, because quite frankly selling as a box set somehow doesn't really sell oh well so the next item will be this Bandai Ben 10 Alien Force collection I bought this as a lot uh, this is actually my first figure out the door the rest are priced slightly higher so uh, it could take a while to sell for those so quite um, I will just sit on it and see how because my niche of collectibles and toys is not your everyday items that go out the door quite frequently so to have two thousand over dollars worth of sales for one week is pretty amazing uh, from an international point of view the next item will be this bride of frankenstein this i had this with the others the others i'm putting it to sell locally this item technically is the higher price item and it's gonna ship out as uh, not as heavy as the rest the rest the, because of the base and the figure it's super heavy <laughs> this had just the figure itself so it went out the door and uh, plus shipping was 96 dollars the next item will be this code of princess this code of princess switch game uh, i have it again if you can click on my last video you can click over here this went up in price it doubled in price so uh, i doubled my money uh, basically on this I sold for 100 US dollars with a shipping cost on it yeah so that's that's one thing to look out for the next item will be this Kotobukiya Bishouju Street Fighter this Street Fighter figure from Chun-Li I bought it and it's selling it to to to, to Japan which is a bit weird <laughs> because it came from Japan the bigger it's a Japanese brand so yeah but this I'm going to talk in brief on what actually happened plus the other item that also sold to Japan which is bonkers that uh, if you're using Q-Express which you can click on here on how to use Q-Express over here um, you might be might want to be aware on what uh, Q-Express uses to sh ship your items out and the last item will be this SDCC Marvel Legends Medusa and Black Bolt the Black Bolt figure that technically didn't really sell as well the Medusa one, people are looking for it. So I kind of combine the two because this this is a couple, it's a husband and wife team in the Marvel Legends uh, universe. And I sold, sold it together and then it went to New Zealand. So yeah, anyway, um, these are the 18 items sold. What I want to talk about is shipping through Q-Express. Q-Express is amazing. So far, so good. Everything has reached to the destinations and everything, uh, be it by uh, normal mail uh, by volumetric weight to various countries US, Canada, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong I've shipped basically anything and everything that is to, to the major countries and so far everything is received as as good as dandy as it is but 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 as with QSPS which I would think that it's cheaper to ship versus Singapore Post our local postage postal rate I mean, technically, QSS uses leverages on Singapore Post, but again, um, they, they offer a cheaper shipping rate, so why not? But when you are shipping it to Japan, of all places, Japan, if you are unaware, it does not leverage on Japanese Post or Singapore Post for that matter. It actually, they, they actually tie up with Sagawa. Sagawa is a courier service. Sagawa technically because it's a courier service they are using volumetric weight 
And for life of me, I didn't know why Q Express was actually charging me more for shipments to Japan. Then I realized they are actually for like for like every parcel that goes through them, they are measuring length, breadth, and height on it. <laughs> they are measuring length, breadth, and height on it, which means even if you weigh the item at one kg, which I have this Chun Li figure, it was weighed less than one kg. But because the box size is that big, the volumetric weight was 2.4 kg. So it bumped up my shipping cost to double it. In, it was actually only 22 Singapore dollars. Then I have to add another 19 dollars on top of it. Pretty irritated by it. But I take it that because it is an international cost to selling, you know, worldwide. So... I just take it as it comes because if I would trot down to Singapore Post to queue and then to ship, I could have done that and I could have saved maybe about five dollars uh, off it because registered mail for less than one kg is thirty five dollars anyway. But yeah, it, it it is what it is uh. So that's where I want to put it to you. Then there was another one which. I will share with you the bullet container thing that I showed you earlier. Uh, that the, the buyer paid thirty US dollars for it, and paid a shipping on uh, thirty US on it. Total sixty. Uh, the it was relatively light. I mean, for what it's worth, because of such a big uh, canister, this this big it was like very big. Anyway, the the shipping on it was only eighteen Singapore dollars. I mean, plus packaging and everything because I factored that into it. But then of course now the QS is telling me that I have to pay additional fifteen dollars on top of it, so the total uh, cost shipping cost to it is thirty three dollars and thirty cents. So that is to Japan again. The only thing consideration if you are using QS Pass to Japan, uh, you might want to be aware that they are using volumetric weight, not because um, they don't use real weight. They use real weight if the real weight is heavier than the volumetric weight. For the others that so far I've sent, they all are going through the normal postal services, the, the country ones. So for Singapore to USPS, Canada Post, Australia Post and all that, they tend to just not use volumetric weight unless really necessary. For that reason alone, um, Weighing it, weighing scale still works. But yeah, I'm just kind of telling you on hindsight that if you want to ship anything to Japan, uh, you might want to weigh and measure both. Use a measuring tape to measure length, breadth and height and use a weighing scale and then see which one is the bigger of the two. But of course, it's still relatively cheap as compared to other countries. Lah. So that's that's one thing I need to emphasize further. Anyway, this is me uh, signing off from here. Hope you have some insight to how to sell on eBay, how to use the various uh, shipping methods from Q Express and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care everyone. I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>